Arno Hazekamp, I'm a cannabis researcher from the Netherlands. I finished my PhD uh, uh, studies in September last year. I've written my thesis about that. Um, this is my fourth conference, uh, Patients Out of Time. Um, I'll explain a little bit about the situation in the Netherlands because it's quite different from what's going on in other countries. Uh, in about 2001, our health minister, she actually had a, a husband suffering from cancer and she realized that there was a quite extensive group of patients in the Netherlands that were going to coffee shops, the well-known Dutch coffee shops, for obtaining cannabis for medicinal reasons and she thought that was quite unacceptable. They were taking risk with their health, they didn't get into the right circles, you know, the, the criminality involved. Uh, she was a little bit afraid of that and she uh, started a program for medicinal cannabis grown by the government grower and provided on prescription through the pharmacy. Well, around that time I was around in my university department uh, looking for a PhD project in the field of medicinal plants and for us, for me, cannabis was just another medicinal plant with a lot of possibilities. I didn't see all the problems attached also because in the Netherlands there's not much problems, uh, not much legal problems in dealing with cannabis. So it seemed to be a, a very interesting subject to work on. I started my project reading the literature and quickly realizing that very many basic concerns around cannabis were never studied well enough. Things were simply missing uh, in the knowledge we, we have about medicinal cannabis. Um, and I tried to spend the last six years, six years to, uh, to fill in these gaps as good as I, as I could. Um, by now, in the Netherlands, there's a blossoming industry around medicinal cannabis. There's a, a state grower providing three different varieties to patients in, in, in the pharmacy. There's a pharmaceutical company um, guaranteeing the quality by quality testing on microbiology, uh, on the content of cannabinoids, the water percentage present in the plants, and it means that already for about five years uh, the quality of cannabis in the Netherlands has been standardized. Um, well, after a few years, pharmacists and doctors, people who could prescribe, started also to see that indeed medicinal cannabis had uh, some value. You can't force a doctor to write a prescription. You have to educate him. It takes some time. I think uh, also that now has been more or less been reached in the Netherlands. Um, so I'm here to learn what, what else has to be done and how we as researchers can, can provide some extra information and help in that respect. I think it's very difficult to, to translate scientific knowledge in, in scientific journals to the, the general population. I, in my opinion, it takes at least five to ten years before this information has been like distilled and translated into normal terms and has been you know, balanced out with other studies before people really can understand it. And it's a long time, especially when people are in need right now and are already using cannabis, which is of course a very unique situation where a medicine has already been used before the doctors in the pharmaceutical industry is ready with it. Uh, usually it's the other way around. They make something and then they sell it to us. So that's um, it's a strange situation. I think what researchers have to do is not only do academic studies on the highest level to try to prove that endocannabinoids are involved in diseases and and, and stuff like that, they also have to look at the basic needs. Um, one of my own studies was focusing on cannabis tea, because in the Netherlands, the Dutch government was realizing that telling people to go smoking while the whole trend, not only in the Netherlands, but everywhere in Western countries is against smoking. It wasn't really feasible to start saying that. So they said, well, then don't smoke, but use a vaporizer or use tea. And the question was, well, what do you know about tea? What happens when, when you make a cup of tea? You make it 10 times and you get 10 times the same composition. What happens when you store it in the refrigerator? Um, and you have to say, well, actually, we don't know. But it just sounds better. <laughs> and that's a, yeah, it's a strange situation. And I thought, well, if we want to know, we can just study it. It's not very complicated. You know, we have all the materials. We have the cannabis uh, available. Um, so let's do it. Another study was on the volcano vaporizer. Uh, we also didn't really know how it worked. I approached the, the, the producer of the volcano vaporizer and I asked him, you know, what do you actually know about your vaporizer? He said, well, it works. I said, well, how do you know? He said, well, I inhaled 
the vapor and I get stone. I said, well, that's not proof. Uh, it's not good enough. So give me a, a vaporizer and I'll test it for you and in one year I'll give you the information. So we did that. We found out exactly how it works, that it works, that it's reproducible and reliable. And now already three different clinical trials have been done based on this, this single study. So I think if you ask the right questions and you, you have a systematic approach to find the answer, you can solve a lot of problems that have been hunting us already for too long.